I mean, certainly the Senate. Um, thank you for proposing that legislation. I'm glad you got some provisions passed. But uh, folks in the House, I mean, it, it, total failure. It's one yeah, of the biggest yeah. failures probably in the history of Congress. That was David Grush on News Nation. He sounded very disappointed. He said this is probably the greatest failure in democracy ever, he said, ever. Okay, but now we have decentralized media, armed services committee members, and that is Mike Rogers right there. So back in August, I called Mike Rogers out by name. And I didn't use some remote viewing to do it, some crazy technique, and I'm not a genius. I'm pretty sure I'm not a genius. It wasn't that difficult to predict the future that defense industries would try and stop this bill going through, the Schumer bill. And Mike Rogers was right at the top of the list. Members of Congress who have received the most money from defense industry this cycle. In this video, we'll go through an article by Christopher Sharp. I actually communicated with him. I have some comments. Amazing article here about Daniel Sheehan exposes five powerful Republicans blocking the UFO Disclosure Act as the clock ticks down. So they, it sounds like they did block it. Final negotiations are ongoing now, but it does not sound good. So in this video, we'll go over the article. David Grush seems pretty disappointed. But with decentralized information now, you can see clearly what the issue is. And the trail leads back to the Supreme Court in 2010 on actually what is the definition of a corporation. It's pretty interesting. The good news is we can see all this now. You can see it quite clearly happen real time. That's how I was able to predict the futures just by looking at the obvious organization. Chris Lado, welcome to Lado Files. Thanks for being here. Welcome to the channel. So this is from nine days ago. Daniel Sheehan exposes five powerful Republicans blocking UFO Disclosure Act. So that's Paul Schumer's act as the clock ticks down. Written by Christopher Sharp, 3 December 2023. In a Liberation Times interview, ex-Watergate and Pentagon Papers lawyer Daniel Sheehan, so ex-Watergate and Pentagon Papers lawyer Daniel Sheehan, representing whistleblowers, alleging hidden and potentially unlawful programs involving materials of non-human origin, warned that the window is closing to preserve the unidentified anomalous phenomena language in the U.S. Senate's 2024 National Defense Authorization Act. So Daniel Sheehan has been on a few podcasts lately. I hope to have him on the show, but that's what he's saying here. He, he represented uh, ex-Watergate and Pentagon Papers lawyer. I met him actually at the UAP hearing. It's interesting. I believe he said he'd come on the show. So the language here, he's representing whistleblowers. He is representing the whistleblowers. Amazing. Alleging hidden and potentially unlawful programs involving materials of non-human origin. Warned that the window is closing to preserve the UAP language in the U.S. Senate's 2024 National Defense Authorization Act. So this was nine days ago. My guess is it has closed. The language known as the UAP Disclosure Act of 2023 put forth by Senate leader Chuck Schumer and Senator Mike Browns advocates for a controlled disclosure regarding the potential existence of materials and biologics with unknown or non-human origins. I think a lot of this started when David Grush actually had members of inside the program who who knew about and worked on firsthand biologics is what David Grush has said in his previous interviews. They talked to some senators and Senate aides. I think it changed some minds. They wrote the Schumer Act along with Round. So it's a bipartisan, amazing act. Going through it was passed through the Senate and then the House. So in the US, we have two houses of Congress. We have the Senate, which is 100 people, two from each state. And we have Congress, which is representative by the population. So we have 435 congresspeople from each district, right? Think of it like county, county mayor. Sheehan pointed out that the only opposition to the UAP legislation comes from five influential Republican politicians, Senators Wicker and Mitch McConnell, minority leader of the Senate, and representatives Mike Turner, Mike Rogers, and Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House. So Mitch McConnell, minority leader of the Senate, and I haven't heard of Wicker, actually. This is a new name to me, Senator Wicker. And Mitch McConnell, Representative Mike Turner is literally the representative from Wright-Patterson, Ohio. And we'll see, Chris Sharp mentions a certain company here. Mike Rogers already mentioned, top of the list. Mike Turner was also on that number. He's in the top five of Congress people getting the most political donations from defense companies. 98% of everybody in Congress is in support of this bill. It's just these five guys holding it up. Look at that, five guys. Like, 
it's again, you don't have to be a genius. Sheehan told Liberation Times that the resistance against the UAP language is headed by representatives Mike Rogers and Mike Turner, chairs of the House's Armed Services Committee and Intelligence Committee. You literally, chairs of the committee can just say, nope, we're not going to see that. Are you serious? Sheehan and other sources revealed that both individuals have faced pressure from private defense contractors and the intelligence community influencing their opposition. Looked at that. Asked to specifically name the entities pressuring representatives Turner and Rogers, Sheehan pinpointed Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Radiance Technologies, and the CIA's Directorate of Operations, run by, run by David Marlowe, its current deputy director. While the Liberation Times has been unable to further substantiate the involvement of these organizations, Sheehan states, the two chairpersons have been gotten to by the private aerospace industry and by the CIA. Well, that's never happened before. Who knows what positive offers they've been made by additional campaign contributions. We know they've gotten many or what kind of threats have been made to them. The CIA's covert operations people are capable of delivering. Chris then goes on to explain the director of operations functions as the clandestine branch of the CIA and serves as, as the nation's authority for coordinating, deconflicting, and evaluating clandestine operations across the United States intelligence community. So it's really the Directorate of Operations for the CIA. And that should be appointed by the president. So it should be all executive branch. So really, it's the executive branch that has all of the information, all of the alien stuff. Sources indicate to Liberation Times that the CIA's Office of Global Access works closely with the Directorate of Operations in conducting retrieval missions involving crashed or landed crafts of non-human origin. Sheehan added, the Operations Directorate is the dog that wags the tail in the CIA. Sheehan then names these companies, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, and now Radiance Technologies are given particular discrete aspects of the technology to try to figure it out. Sheehan said that the three contractors could potentially be subject to lawsuits due to the alleged arrangements with the CIA, commenting, it makes those particular companies subject to massive antitrust lawsuits by other companies that are trying to be honest and trying to compete against them. Okay, I did receive a response from Chris Sharp. He said, I received some criticism for not getting responses from representatives in Congress, but I would add that Representative Turner actively avoids providing comment on UAP. Ever since he was vice chair of Intel, I've reached out to him to seek comment, but nothing. Chris then mentions Radiance Technologies maintains an office in Beaver Creek, Ohio, situated within Representative Turner's congressional district. Surprise. Additionally, its headquarters in Huntsville, Alabama, is conveniently located near Representative Rogers' district. Since 2010, over $30,000 was given by Radiance Technologies to Representative Rogers and over $60,000 to Representative Turner. Radiance Rogers also appears to be familiar with the Radiance Technologies employees. And in 2020, he was a guest of honor at Radiance celebrated its 20th anniversary by opening a new 104,000 square foot facility in Huntsville. At the event, Representative Rogers said, when you look at what Radiance is working on, it's not just the cutting edge of what this town's doing. It's on the cutting edge of what we're going to be needing in the future as we try to defend our country and fight the wars of the future. AI, cyber, hypersonics, all those things are essential for us being able to fight the wars of the future, and you're on the cutting edge of that. So that's great, right? That's what they're working on in secret AI, cyber, and hypersonics. I'm sure that won't backfire and be used against us in the future at any point. In contrast to Radiance Technologies, Lockheed Martin is a considerably larger entity. Since 2010, the company has contributed over $190,000 apiece to Representative Turner and Representative Rogers, respectively, notably in the 2021-22 cycle. Lockheed Martin made a significant donation to Representative Rogers, providing him with $70,000. And in the 2019-2020 cycle, Representative Turner received $74,350 from Lockheed Martin. And I guess people don't think this is a lot of money, but think about that. It's $74,000. I mean, that's not an insubstantial amount of money. Importantly, it should be noted that despite suspicions of such influence, there is no evidence to suggest that Radiance Technologies, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, or the CIA are influencing Representatives Turner or Rogers. Any potential private influences driving Representatives Turner and Rogers remain private. Is there really no evidence? <laughs> All you have to do is look in the open realm, like just look in the open source, and there actually is an amazing amount of evidence. There's no evidence. You just go and look literally at it. Just, just go look at it. 
Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission, 558 U.S. 310. So this was in 2010, is a landmark decision of the Supreme Court of the United States regarding campaign finance laws and free speech under the First Amendment to the Constitution. So I've read through the Constitution on this channel a few times, actually. No one expects the Constitution. And you probably heard a lot about the Second Amendment and recently the First Amendment. Second Amendment is the right to bear arms. And the First Amendment, the one they wrote in first but didn't write into the original document, was the right to free speech, right? So persons get the right to free speech. Persons, though. But what changed in 2010 is, and really gotten worse since then is really from this. You can see it. So the court held five to four that the freedom of speech clause of the First Amendment prohibits the government from restricting independent expenditures for political campaigns by corporations, including nonprofit corporations, labor unions, and other associations. So the court held five to four, so very narrowly held that freedom of speech should be granted to corporations. They cannot be stopped. Independent expenditures for political campaigns can be done by corporations. That's including nonprofit corporations, labor unions, and other associations, meaning super PACs, et cetera. Now, anyone on the planet can basically donate to a political candidate while he's in office, even. Isn't that insane? And if you look, really, it, it all comes around from hate, essentially. The case began after Citizens United, a conservative nonprofit organization, sought to air and advertise a film critical of then Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton, right? This group, group of people, were upset about Fahrenheit 9-11. Citizens United, a nonprofit 501c organization, filed a complaint before the Federal Election Commission, charging that advertisements for Michael Moore's Fahrenheit 9-11 docudrama critical of Bush administration's response to the terrorist attacks on September 9-11 produced and marketed by a variety of corporate entities, so corporations, basically. They said corporations created, uh, helped create, or essentially created Michael Moore's film, Fahrenheit 9-11. So Citizens United, you can't make this stuff up, man, created the documentary Celsius 41.11. <laughs> Celsius 41.11. Uh, that is a famous book, which is both highly critical of Fahrenheit 911 and 2004 Democratic presidential nominee John Kerry. So it did attack against them. The FEC, however, the Federal Election Commission, held that showing the movie and advertisements for it would violate the Federal Election Campaign Act. So they couldn't show it because Citizens United was not a bona fide commercial filmmaker. You're not a media maker. You're not on the list. You're not on the list. Can't be on the list. Sorry, you can't. Uh... Can't donate. Oh, like them? Fahrenheit 9-11? Yeah. Is that a date? 41-11? Oh, man. What's amazing is Citizen United like went and worked out and they made all these documentaries. <laughs> they made documentaries so that they could be considered a bona fide media company. And then they came back and they said, we're a bona fide media company. And so you have to let us make this movie Hillary and put it out. Opinion of the court, five justices formed the majority and joined an opinion written by Justice Anthony Kennedy. They found that BCRA, this was the prior law, prohibition of all independent expenditures by corporations and unions violated the First Amendment's protection of speech. Look at that. They said, protect the First Amendment's protection of speech granted to unions and corporations. The majority wrote, right, this dude right here, thank you. If the First Amendment has any force, it prohibits Congress from fining or jailing citizens, right? Okay, I get it. I love that. That's amazing. Or associations of citizens, right? Or simply engaging in political speech. There they go. Or associations of citizens. So what did they do? They literally gave the First Amendment right to organizations between media and other corporations, all of them, meaning they treat them as a, a person a literal person because they are a group of people. And so how can you limit a group of people's decision or wishes to influence our political system? And if we look what a corporation actually is, a corporation is an organization, usually a group of people or a company authorized by the state to act as a single entity 
a legal entity recognized by private and public law as born out of statute. That's born out of statute, a legal person in legal context and recognized as such in law for certain purposes. And that now includes freedom of speech. So you give freedom of speech to corporations. And what is the definition of a corporation? It is a new entity, a different entity, separate from the individuals that created it, right? That's the benefit of an LLC, of a company, of a corporation, is that the company now has the liability. It also has the decision-making authority. And as we see right here, unfortunately, citizens versus the FEC, Federal Election Commission, Supreme Court decision gave corporations First Amendment rights. So that means all labor unions, companies, corporations, companies like Lockheed Martin, etc. Five guys can now stop a bill. They can completely stop, derail, and what was that, like less than a week before we even found out about it, in final, final negotiations, the UAP Disclosure Act gets completely hamstrung. It's like these dudes just came out of the back and just shot an arrow right into the hamstring of the bill. And the amazing thing is, if you go and look, surely they did something illegal. But I don't think they did anything illegal, unless there is some law that I don't know about saying that no one can call them. This is following the money. The reason I was able to forecast this months in advance, okay, I did not have Mike Rogers' name. I didn't know about the Disclosure Act even. Stuff is out and all out in the open. And now we have decentralized media. I get a lot of comments as well when I talk about my theory videos and that deep I go, but that's fine. I do get negative comments when I go into theory videos. I'd rather produce more positive content to be honest. I actually am positive. I am optimistic. Unfortunately, the opposition seems very powerful right now, and I don't see them actually giving anything away. When this act was passed in 2010, the idea was if it is transparent, then the citizens can actually see what is going on, and the citizens can vote to change it. And that is actually the case, because at the end of the day, the corporations don't in fact get votes. They don't actually get the vote, as far as we know. <laughs> Hopefully it's not that bad. What they do is they get who's on the ticket. They get to decide who is actually on the ticket. But unfortunately for Representative Mike Rogers and Mike Turner is that now we can see what's going on. Okay, we can see that clearly. They receive the most from defense industries. We can see which defense industries. We can see why, that they're in their districts. And these people are being named by Daniel Sheehan. And it looks like it is being exposed, not by the mainstream media, if you notice. It's by News Nation, these startups. And if you look, disruption in any industry, right, especially any tech industry, this is a media tech industry, comes from the outside. Disruption comes from the outside. Danny Sheehan is representing these whistleblowers. Do, are they really lying? If these people have direct knowledge of the program, then could this be a break? At any rate, they had to show their hand. That is their hand. We can see exactly what the issue is. And now you can apply pressure. We can vote. We can communicate through decentralized communication now. I encourage you guys to go to UAP Society YouTube. We have amazing new moderators. This is George. He's starting new content, creating new content on his own channel and UAP Society. This is Hello Alley and her partner, Justin. Amazing members. And now they are making a weekly UAP news show right after mine. This is Leslie, again, another great moderator. We watched through every video, all 16 videos, I believe, all entrants to the UAP Society contest. And they'll win $1,000 and $500 in Ethereum. If you want to be a part of that decentralized science UAP Society effort, then go to that video. It's a long video. Check it out and see if you have any inputs where UAP Society holders will be voting on the winning videos results and payout will be by christmas thanks to everyone being here please smash the like button if you did like this content i grew up watching gi joe as an f-16 pilot for 18 years and gi joe knowing is half the battle and knowing i think is more than half the battle so i really am thankful to be living in this time we have so many motivated people and this is a de decentralized organization off on its own right not related to galileo or arrow or any of those things collecting data from experiencers,
collecting data on human sensors and digital sensors. And if you want backstage content, I released a video with Reuben Levitt on how I meditate, how he taught me to meditate, then join at patreon.com forward slash Chris Slato. Link is in the description. And that's just one of the 45 plus videos now that are Patreon exclusive. So you can check out all those videos, all a little bit different, many of them, most of them about UAPs, but a lot of them about different things. So thanks again for being here, everyone. Have a great day. Peace.